<sighs> beautiful all right welcome beautiful women to our webinar today on five key things that you can do to embrace your sexual self and um, this is obviously something that is quite important for women or piques a lot of interest because out of all the webinars I have done so far, this one got the absolute most interest and a lot of women registering. And I know a lot can't join us live um, because some people work during the day. <laughs> um, but everybody will get the recording and I know that this information is really wanted by women. So here it is. So for those of you who haven't worked with me personally or directly, um, I am Amy and I am the founder and creator of Temple of She. Now, Temple of She is a space for women to come into to explore who they are as a sexual woman and as a spiritual woman and how those two intersections meet and what that looks like for them and how is that expressed for them? Because it's individual for every single woman and we all have our own stories around it and our own blockages and fears and shit around it that stops us completely um, expressing that part of ourselves in the world. So these things are pieces of us that we keep hidden or we've worked really, 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 really well to suppress and not show. These are things that are right on the surface that we're happy to kind of show in this sort of little bit of a way and nothing else. Um, and there's things that we love to express in the privacy and safety of a, a space with a trusted lover or um, partner or anything like that. So there's a whole range of aspects to your sexual self. Yeah, when you think about archetypes and everything is archetypal, when it comes to your sexuality, fuck, there's a whole range of archetypal faces to her and to that. So today we're just going to look at five really simple things that you can do to start embracing her a little bit more every single day. And these are things that are practical. I'm, I love, I'm all for spirituality, but I'm fucking over the woo woo and I'm over things that sound great and things that if they existed would actually be great, but I want the real tangible things that you can do in your life now. And that's what I focus on when I work with women. So that's what these are going to be. It's five things that you can do today if you choose to. And they're things that will actually make a fucking difference because that's the whole point, right? <laughs> that's why we're here. That's what we want to know is those things. So number one, if you can get a pen and paper ready. And number one is... The idea that first, before you can even express her, before you can embrace her, you have to kind of know who she is. So it's getting to know her. So what I want you to do now is take about 60 seconds, I will time us, it's not going to be a long time, and just start to write down things of who is she? What does she like? What do this your sexual self we're talking about? So your sexual self, put her in the driver's seat and just writing down whatever it may be, words, sentences, things that who is she? What does she like? How does she like to express herself? Think about sexual encounters you've had and things that you really love. And you do not have to share these publicly, so don't hold back, write whatever you like. You can burn this afterwards, do whatever you like with it. What does she like? Does she like being kissed softly? Does she like being thrown on the bed roughly? Does she like oral sex? Does she like public sex? Does she like her hair being stroked and the soft touch of feathers or petals on her skin? Like, what does she like? You really just tap into her. What turns her on? What actually makes her excited and want to be present. And just go for about 30 seconds more, writing down anything and everything, ideas, concepts, even colours, like does she really fucking love red? Or does she love gold? Or does she love black? Like does she love textures? 
tastes? Does she love hot? Or does she love that ping of ice cold? Sensations. Think about all five senses. Okay, so just wrapping up the last point that you're writing, the last thing that wants to be on that page. <sighs> Lots of few cheesy smiles going on. <laughs> okay, so that was our number one key step, yeah, getting to know her, actually identifying her. Who is she in me? And, you know, you can't express or embrace something unless you actually know what it is that you're embracing. So the second step is what is stopping you from embracing her? Do you actually even know what it is within you that's stopping yourself from doing that thing, asking for that thing? So now just writing down what it is that is blocking her from being expressed. What is it that is stopping you from fully embracing her? Is it fear of judgment, embarrassment, is it shame? Is it, does it feel dangerous? If I do that thing, I might get raped. If I do that thing, I might get subjected to judgment or my partner might leave me. What is it that is stopping you fully embracing those things that you've already written on the page? Is it, I just don't have the money to afford the incredible trapeze sex swing to install on my roof. <laughs> yeah, is it I don't have the contacts or I don't live in a place where I can go to classes or workshops or things to teach me how to do these things. Like really get practical. All the things that are stopping you from expressing and embracing those things you've already written down. I just don't know how. I didn't write anything in the first bit because I haven't got a fucking clue. This step, this step is kind of the key to all five, yeah, because unless we can start to shift the things that are on this list that you're writing, we're kind of not going to get anywhere with this. So when we're done with these five, I'm going to give you some um, things to access that will really help shift these things that you're writing now. So just 30 seconds, just wrapping up what it is that you're writing that's blocking this expression within yourself. If you could do any of those things tomorrow, what is stopping you from doing that? Okay. Oh, all right. So <clears throat> I want to just give those of us that are here live a chance, if you wish, to just share any of the things that are blocking you from doing those things. You don't have to share if you don't want to. Be mindful that this recording will go out to people. So just share as much or as little as you like. Um, and, you know, even a part of that hesitation in sharing because it might be seen is a blockage to expressing and embracing your sexual self. Yeah. <laughs> so did anyone want to share anything, Sasha? Ironically, as you said that, one of the things that um, I wrote down was the fact that as a nomad, I very rarely have a private space. Yeah. I'm very often in like a shared room or staying at my friends and don't want to, you know, be that house guest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So actually just that sharing, like even you just saying that is funny because it really reflects like, oh, well, one of my biggest issues is I don't have a private like space. <laughs> yeah, 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 totally. And, you know, if, if you did do those things in that space, like what, what does it mean to be that person? Like what, what judgment well, is it? I've been in that space when other people 
came home really drunk and did those things. And was, I was just like, oh God, now I have to look at you tomorrow morning. <laughs> Knowing all that just happened tonight. <laughs> Maybe firsthand. So like, I know what being on that re- like receiving end, so to speak, of being in that position is. So like, that's where, that's where that block comes up. It's like, oh yeah, because I know what that's like to be in that space of like, oh God. <laughs> Yeah. And then, you know, again, into that, like, what does that mean being on the receiving end? Why is there that, oh, I've got to look at you in the morning? Like, you know, what is it that's, that's shameful about witnessing somebody expressing that? Yeah, yeah I think it's the lack of awareness. Yeah. Because it wasn't really a conscious choice that was made. It was so drunk and a whole like and people who even the next day were like i i don't ever want to see those people again like the whole thing was just like being a witness to unconscious non-present choices even of people of what they chose to do what how it all happened like the whole process was just very disconnected and unconscious and i think that's really where the root is yeah totally because you know and then then when it comes to sexuality there's the there's a whole nother thing around consent boundaries um yours and respecting others and that's that's a huge thing there is you know when it comes to public sex and affection and and, um public displays of sexual activity it's like okay where where's the consent and the boundaries and the respect here so it's you know it's one thing to not do it because you're ashamed but it's another to not do it through respecting other people's boundaries with where they're at in their comfortability. And yeah, this is a huge thing when it comes to children and teaching children sexual expression and accessing their bodies and their private parts. It's like, yeah, kids love to walk around and swing their willies and touch their vag and all sorts of things. And it's like, okay, how do we teach them to do that in a way that's self-respecting, not teach them that it's dirty, but not walk down the main street doing that. <laughs> so it's, it's, it comes into that conversation of respect and other people's boundaries. And it has, it's so important to understand it is different for everyone. So that's, yeah, a really awesome point, Sasha. Thank you. Oh, cool. Okay. Anybody else want to share their blockages of what... They've got around expressing her. Yeah, Monica. Yeah, I think for me, some of the blockages are from past experiences. So when I've stepped into a space where I've um, been really open and vulnerable and then had a response that maybe wasn't entirely positive or maybe not completely judgmental but a bit confrontational about what I had asked for or how I had been in that space. And so that sort of shut that space down a little. And now, even though I I still want to ask for it, a little part of me stops and says, ooh, are you you ready for the repercussion if it comes again? Yeah, Yeah. remember what happened last time. Yeah, exactly. And it's almost a body response. You know, the the logical mind can work through it, but the body draws in. Yeah, totally, totally, absolutely. And, you know, we, and that's how we dictate a lot of our life and a lot of our actions in life, yeah, not just when it comes to our sexual self. And it's, it's laying down that limbic imprint of how we respond to a situation, an interaction, mm-hmm. a behaviour. And it's um, a lot of it comes down to trust and self-worth and even just understanding that the way that happened last time was the alchemy between those two, yeah? There was two people's... Um, I don't know, destinies, if you like, or paths that were crossing in that moment that both had to receive out of that moment. And for the person that shut you down or what you're expressing down was doing that out of where they were at at that point in time. But we don't Mm. have that understanding in the moment. It's always, oh, God, rejection, shutting down, never doing that again. Whereas when we step into another circumstance, if we could take the understanding that this is a different alchemy, this is a different position. This is a different dynamic between the two of us. And anything is possible. So imagine if you could take that logical understanding <laughs> into these situations, our expression would be completely different, yeah? 
yeah yeah it's a really good point yeah oh <laughs> thank you thanks <sighs> gabby did you want to share you don't have to go and yeah cool i'll share a few things <clears throat> my biggest block at the moment is not having anybody to explore all the, explore the experiences that I want to explore with. Yeah. And I have a ginormous block about putting myself on online dating. Like there's nothing wrong with that, but I can't put myself on Tinder for some reason. <laughs> like, why is that? I don't know. There's, mm. so that's one of them, not having anyone currently to explore all of my desires with. Yeah. Um, oh, I loved what you said about not having access to workshops and things, you know, living in a rural town. I would love to go to all the things that Brisbane and Melbourne offer. And I just, it's not quite access accessible to me, but definitely want to start making that happen more and doing Shibari workshops and learning how to tie and all those sorts of things. Um, and then recently, not being understood in like you meet someone but you, you both want different things and they aren't willing or don't want to out of respect for themselves or their beliefs or whatever but they don't want to try anything or any of the things you want to try <clears throat> so it's also finding someone that's that's sort of wanting the same things as you as well yeah that's yeah. some of the current roadblocks that i'm <laughs> experiencing yeah absolutely and and they can also be a hell of a lot of value in mm -hmm. being with someone who doesn't want to experience what you were wanting. Exactly. Yeah. And there's a lot of learning in that and respecting where other people are at and kind of digging, why am I wanting to express myself in this way? Why am I wanting to explore this part of myself and the dynamic between the two of you? If you know, and that happens quite a lot. A lot of women come to me. Oh my God, I want to do this, this and this. And my husband doesn't. Or my husband wants to do da 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 and I don't. <laughs> So it's like, yeah, what, what's in that? Where do we go with that? So, yeah, absolutely. Good point. Thanks, Gabby. Cool. Okay. Now, Kate, I know you've joined kind of after we did that activity, so I won't expect you to <laughs> share anything. Um, yeah, some really incredible things. Like they're really some logistical blocks and some emotional and mental blocks. And like you've kind of basically covered the whole range of what it can be that blocks us expressing and fully embracing our sexual self and I want to really emphasize here that our true sexual self is different there is not one woman who will watch this video and have the same sexual expression or self identification as any other woman here yeah so even though like it might be wanting to go to a shibari workshop and learn how to tie people up or it might just want to be how to have an orgasm in missionary with my husband yeah or it could just be how do i orgasm by myself in masturbation masturbation or you know there's all sorts of faces to this and comparison we love comparison artists yeah we love comparing ourselves to others and your sexual self does not have to be a wild courageous out there crazy sex woman <laughs> she totally can if you want her to be but she does not have to be that's not what being a fully expressive sexual woman is about okay so moving on to number three the third key step in embracing your sexual self is getting physical yeah going there we have physical sexual genitalia get to know it yeah you've just identified things and how to know the kind of the mental energetic sexual aspect of yourself there's a the physical yeah we have all of these incredible pieces in our physical body anatomy that we have no clue what they are even what they look like how they work what their functions are it is your obligation to yourself as a woman to get to know that research about your anatomy i have a, a um an hours webinar on my youtube channel full of the female anatomy 101 the basics yeah the most common question women ask me when they come for a yoni massage is which hole do i pee out of these are grown women who have never been taught or given the space or felt safe enough to even find out the basics of how their body functions 
So you can imagine the plethora of other questions they have about what the fuck is going on down there. So that is a really, really, really important step in embracing your sexual self is you've, you've got to know what it is and how it works. Part of my 12 week immersion, which a lot of women here are on at the moment is we go into the sexual anatomy. Yeah. So we go past the physical, like the, the urethra and the bladder and the pelvic floor and the ligaments and all that good stuff into the actual sexual anatomical pieces. And that's a really another important thing that women need to know about themselves, your capabilities of pleasure. Yeah. Stasha has just written, I can't tell you how many women come to me and don't know ovulation exists. Totally. Absolutely. No clue what my period is. I know I bleed every now and then, but don't know what it means. Yeah, absolutely. It's women are very disconnected from our physical bodies. That is a big part of society today. And, you know, a result of us living in such a patriarchal dominated society for such a long time, we've just removed ourselves from ourselves. So it's getting to know that physical level and all the wondrous things she has. So many women today have endometritis, endometriosis. So many women have polycystic ovarian syndrome. There's so many sexual anatomical related conditions, diseases, illnesses that women are starting to have. And I personally think it's part of it is because we are so removed from ourselves as women emotionally, energetically, and physically. So get a fucking mirror, sit there and look at her, squat over a mirror, pull the labia open. What's the inside like? How far can I stick my fingers up? All oh, that's squishy, all oh, that's mushy. Like get to know her, feel her, explore her, get to know your physical self. So, so, so important. So number four, step number four in embracing your sexual self is giving yourself permission to express her. Yeah, you can get to know her, you can explore her, you can know what she likes and what she doesn't like, and you're starting to be okay with that and starting to become comfortable with that. But you cannot fully embrace her unless you let her out. Yeah, unless you express her. And this is what we sort of touched on in the first one um, about being visible in your sexuality. That's part of expressing your sexuality. How does she want to dress? What jewellery does she want to wear? Does she want to wear something that's a little bit low cut and, and show some boobage? Does she want to wear a short skirt and feel fucking hot? Does she want to wear a beautiful, long, flowing dress that blows in the breeze and just makes her feel so soft and sensual? How does she want to express herself? Does she want to dance a particular way? Does she want to paint her nails? Does she want to... Flip her hair to the other side. Does she want to put a flower behind her ear? How does she want to express herself? Does she want to wear a lacy hot G-string under her clothes that nobody will know is there and that excites her? How does she want to express herself? Yeah, all of these things that we've written down in number one, getting to know her, what does she like? What does she want? How are you going to express those? How are you going to bring those into your tangible physical life? Every single day. Yeah, you can ask yourself when you get up in the morning, what does my sexual self want to wear? What does she want to eat? Does she want to go and sit with a mango and feel the juice just run down everywhere and just lick it all up and feel that incredible sensuality of eating something so yummy and juicy? What does she want to wear? What does she want to eat? How does she want to speak? Who does she want to spend time with? Oh, fuck, I've got coffee with that friend who's such a downer and she really does not turn me on. You know, and turn on doesn't have to be a sexual, you make me horny turn on. Turn on is what lights you up on the inside. What ignites that divine feminine center in you. That is what turn on is. And, you know, if you've got lunch with that friend who just does not do that, is your sexual self asking you to cancel that today and saying no to that? And actually, I want to text that chick that I met at the store the other, or at yoga the other week who really intrigued me. I really want to get to know her more. That excites me. Yeah, that can be expressing your sexual self. So really just giving yourself permission to do that, to be that woman. Yeah, and there's, there's, I, I can imagine as I'm saying these things, there's women who are listening to this going, oh God, I couldn't do that because da 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 Yeah, put it down on the blocks list. Go back to number two, add it to the list. <laughs> yeah, a lot of this is getting out of your comfort zone. 
because we keep our sexual self very neatly packed in these little boxes down in our comfort zone. Now we like her there. This five steps is getting out of that, stretching the comfort zone and really stepping out of that. So that brings us to number five. Now number five is something that you can do practically every single time you involve yourself in a sexual practice with yourself or with somebody else. It doesn't matter or with a group of people, whatever it is that you're doing. So this simple practice is after you have an intimacy encounter, whether it's masturbation with yourself, whether it's the most incredible mind blowing sex with a partner or a one night stand, a drunken one night stand, whatever it may be. When you're done and in that moment afterwards where you're just laying in that, oh, the aftermath, the oxytocin rush, the sweat, the pulsing of the heart, the plump lips, just feeling that. You can turn to the person you're with or turn within in yourself and you can say, I really loved it when you, and you finish that sentence. Yeah. I really loved it when you just threw me on the bed and laid on top of me and whatever it was. I really loved it when you softly, gently kissed my neck. Or to yourself, oh, fuck, I really loved when that piece of music came on and I noticed that it just took me deeper, it took me further. Yeah, because what you're doing is identifying what you like and you're verbalizing it and essentially you're asking for it and I guarantee you next time you're going to get more of that. And that's the whole idea. <laughs> that's what we want. Yeah, we want more of the good stuff. And how the fuck can they know that's the good stuff unless you're verbalizing it? Yeah, but it also gives your partner that really nice moment of, oh, I pleasured her. Yeah, I was with her. I did something that made her feel turned on. So it's a beautiful gift to give them as well. And if you're doing this with a partner, you can then ask them, was there anything that you loved? Was there something that I did that you really loved? And the more you do this, it kind of just becomes a part of the lovemaking process. And it's continuously extending what you're doing with each other because you're learning what each other likes. And of course, part of pleasure is giving pleasure. So people want to be more pleasurable. They want to pleasure you in the way that you desire. So the more that you incorporate this into your, your intimacy, your sexual encounters, your lovemaking, whatever it be, it doesn't have to be sex. It can be, you know, I mean, the physical interaction of however you have sex, penis and vagina, vagina and vagina, penis and penis, whatever it is, it can be, you know, a blowjob or an oral or just even a massage. Yeah, a beautiful intimate massage between you and partner. I loved it when you massaged around my butt cheeks, whatever it is. Okay, so it's a really beautiful step that you can do and especially, and, and don't underestimate the power of doing that with yourself. Yeah, because it brings awareness into your self-pleasure practice. It brings awareness into what does and doesn't turn you on and what works for you. And it can be, even if you're in a relationship, it can be a really powerful thing to do on your own to start exploring, going back to step one, actually, what does she like? What does she want? How does she want this? Doing that with yourself can be a beautiful way to explore that. And having that conversation with yourself brings another level of awareness rather than just being in it. It creates that kind of reflection time, if you like, afterwards. So those are the five key steps. And I want to put a sneaky number six in there. And this is, it's kind of, basically, it takes time and it takes a fuckload of devotion. This is not something that you can do completely wholeheartedly overnight and instantly. Embracing your sexual self is a journey. Yeah, it is a big journey because as women, we have had years and years and even lifetimes of things that have told us how to suppress her, how to put her away, how not to express her. So now we're unlearning that, we're rewriting that. So you're not going to do that instantly. Some things may drop in and fucking really be powerful and that's it from that day forward. But the whole process is a journey and it takes you showing up 
every single day. It's commitment. And it's, you know, it's, it's how much do I really want to be this part of myself? How much do I want to let her out? How much pleasure do I actually want in my life? So it really takes time and devotion to become this part of yourself and to really give her a front seat. So those five key steps, number one is getting to know her. Yeah, what does she like? What does she want? How does she want to be expressed? How does she want to be touched and felt and caressed? What's blocking you being her and expressing her? Get physical. Get to know your physical body. Get to know your genitalia, your anatomy, what it does, how it works everything that it involves number four is to express her yeah embracing her is expressing her the two coexist express her every day how does she want to act how does she want to dress what does she want to wear who does she want to interact with how does she want to fuck yeah and number five is that reflection of intimacy after intimacy encounters i really loved it when when you did this, when you did that. So those are five very powerful steps that you can use every single day in your devotion to your embracing your sexual self. So has anybody got any questions about those five or anything around that at this stage? No? Cool. Okay. Beautiful. Thank you, ladies. And I want to, in the email, I did mention that there will be a special little offer for women who came along and registered. So I will just speak to it. Um, I have just released today the next dates for the 12-week immersion. It begins on the 13th of August for anyone who may be interested. And um, if you sign up for that this weekend, so before midnight on Sunday night, you can get $150 off. So it is $7.95. Minus 150, it is 6.45 for the 12-week immersion starting on the 13th of August. And the code word is 150 webinar. You'll get the link in the email. And also the practitioner, the Yoni Massage Practitioner Training closes on Monday. So this weekend is the last chance to snag an opportunity to join us. And I have filled my weekend with times for women to book an interview with me to have a chat and see if it is the right fit for you. The prerequisite is the 12 week immersion. Um, so you do need to jump on board this weekend and get yourself a place in the 12 week immersion and the practitioner training. So much love to you all. And thank you for wanting to explore your sexual self and how the fuck she looks and how she wants to look in this world. Uh, it's so important and I want all women to just even contemplate that within themselves. So thank you. Mwah. So much love to you all and I'll see you soon.